was sleeping on the floor. Still at the gas station when the time was cold. In the kitchen, hostel, trying to flip it off the stove. Rocking fake J's, praying that nobody know. Watch him take my dog away, it was way too hard to stay composed. Fight to see the light of day, all this blood on my clothes. I was tired every day, green light, it's time to go. I don't want to live life fast or die too young. Die too young. 100 miles per hour, I might crash, cause a good die young. Yeah, a good die young. Push it to the limit, I can't go no more. Red light, no way, I'm coming back home. Long dirt road all on my own. I'ma be the greatest, write my name in the stone. Write my name in the stone. Yeah, I'm coming back home. Yeah, I'm coming back home. Write my name in the stone. Cause I'm coming back home. Cause I'm coming back home. Cause I know my people needed me Diamond in the rough, I don't know what it is they see in me Go down as a legend in my city Cause we beat the streets Trying to spread the wealth around the block No, I can't keep from me Told me I should leave I see the bigger picture and it's way bigger than me Can't be living like a kid But my people need to eat If I got it, then you got it We gon' get back on our feet And I put it on me I don't wanna live life fast Or die too young Or die too young Buy a ball summer, honeymoon lovers, seeing no colors. Love me all summer, making discovers under your covers. And you know what time it is. It is the first game of Windmill on this beautiful Saturday here in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. We are watching Puti, the team from Finland, against NC Southern Hospitality from the U.S. on Ulti TV. I am your host, Corey Sostry, along with Rachel Douglas, and we are very excited to bring you the first game here um, in, within the mixed division. And, yeah, I mean, honestly, Rachel, how are you feeling this morning? Yeah, feeling great. Uh, it's it's lovely weather again here uh, in Amsterdam. We have the sun is shining. Uh, there's not too much of a breeze. Um, it's sort of nice and warm, but not too hot. Uh, not like yesterday. Teams aren't sweating quite yet. Um, but, yeah, it's shaping up to be a really beautiful day, and we've got... Um, a full a full day of, of amazing ultimate streaming here on LT TV, uh, starting with this uh, NC Southern Hospitality against Puti, uh, which I think is going to be an amazing matchup. Uh, very very much looking forward to seeing how the the kind of the US style matches up against a Finnish a Finnish approach, um, yeah. and seeing how how those different approaches might come together and create a really interesting dynamic for us this morning. And I completely agree with you here. Just both teams in a pity of epitome, excuse me, of a mixed team here. We have Puti just having a roster full of experienced players, newer players coming together first, I guess, within 2016 and then in 2019, winning the Finland championships as it was formed, excuse me. And then kind of just not having a lot of chemistry due to COVID, but coming back here in Windmill. And then for Southern Hospitality, a lot of mixed players here from Toro, Phoenix, Ring of Fire, big US clubs here and come to see what Europe has to offer. So <laughs> I even have um, some stakes in the game. One of my boy, number 16, Jobadiah Spaith. We played college ultimate together, so I'm excited to see them. And we take off here with a deep pull from Puti to start the game as Tristan centers it and gives it to Andrea. High release. The Sabato swings the disc around. They continue to look around, trying to see if they can find some options. Pudi giving tough looks. See to see. Looks off defenders. Southern Hospitality trying to get across the halfway point, and there is a foul call. Both teams coming out firing this morning. Some really, really hard cutting going on and like very tight defense we're seeing on the first moments of this first point. Hard, hard to come out with uh, so much energy sometimes on the second day of a tournament, but both teams really clearly done a good warm up and are ready to play. And even then too, as you can tell with the tight competition, I think that's due also to the Swiss draw here. And if you're not aware, the Swiss draw is instead of traditional sense of having a bracket play and everything along those lines. The Swiss draw makes a point system 
where you play teams that are similar to your rankings, and depending on the rankings, you can end with a draw once the 70 minutes are up. And it's a deep shot. Spada looks. So the Romo gets up, gets high, fakes the pass. Looking around, looking at. And it is the catch for Tristan Green. A little bit of contact, I think, on that, like kind of follow through. I think he made the catch, and the defender was just trying to move into that space, trying to put some pressure on. Unfortunately, a little bit of, little bit of contact they came through, but I think that was just, uh, you know, that just happens sometimes when you're when you're trying to get into that same space. No foul called, no problem. Just a little kind of checking each other all, all right, and then back to their respective lines. But yeah, great opening point. Very kind of, very fired up, very focused. But those cuts from. Uh, NC Southern Hospitality, incredibly sharp, really making some shapes on the field. Uh, and then Puti obviously coming in with a lot of defensive pressure. Wasn't enough to get the turn this this point. Um, but now they'll be coming out on O and have an opportunity to show what they've got. As you can see here within the sweet replay, just Southern Hospitality getting up, high pointing the disc between two defenders, waving off some options. And then Tristan Green, the captain for the team, trying to find the open space realizing it and getting in the end zone for the score. And again, a great point. If I'm Pucci, I'm still pretty excited about that one. I mean, great defense played. Yeah, they managed to contain them a lot. They had to make lots and lots of passes to get down the field. So I think that's what Pucci's going to be looking for, making sure that they're not able to just kind of launch it deep or take, take just a few options. They're really having to pass it through their players. And now here we see Pucci. Working the disc up the line. They're about halfway already as they get here. And the throw by Lino. Sandberg looking up the line. And they're right on the doorstep. Are they going to punch it in? Pucci looks. And it's inside. And it is a score for Pucci, making it look seamless, flowing up the line. And honestly, yeah, again, looking pretty chill from them. Yeah, that was incredibly calm, very kind of. Uh, tidy offense I would say like very uh, focused on the fundamentals we just saw some some really like nice cuts being set up Pooty players leaving lots of space they knew where they wanted to attack uh, they knew how to cycle through we saw a few people you know making a good cut not getting the disc clearing out early making space for their teammates very nice very like textbook calm offense um, and obviously I think they, they managed to put that in a little bit quicker uh, than NC Southern Hospitality so um, perhaps perhaps feeling a little bit more comfortable on the disc this morning, but obviously we're only two points into the game, perhaps a little early to call, but um, just so far, we've seen a, a slightly swifter, slightly smoother offensive point from, from Puti there. And even then Sandberg, number 17 for Puti, giving a hockey assist to himself, just throwing it up line and then also cutting inside to get the score. Something of beauty right there. And I agree with you, Rachel. It looks like Puti looked a little better on the disc compared to the first O points between both teams, but it's still early. Southern Hospitality come at it again to see maybe if they can right the ship. Well, not right the ship, I should say, <laughs> but maybe come and hold again with strength. Yeah, six minutes into the game, I don't think we can kind of uh, make any big decisions about how anyone's playing, but, but, but certainly both teams really uh, showing some high-class ultimate this morning. Nisbato gets it back to Green. Green looks around, waves off Spaeth. Set the room are looking around. Despato gets the disc. Spaith waiting. Gives it to Green. Southern Hospitality around the halfway mark. Chucks it deep. And it's tipped, but it's still in the air. And a greatest attempt is just a little <laughs> it's It's a difficult greatest attempt, but we will always accredit that. Set the room are trying to get there, but again, an interesting tip D just floating in the air like that. Yeah, there were uh, lucky there wasn't like a, a sort of a easier second play on that one, but uh, a good a good effort to make sure they weren't able to bring it down the first time, and then I guess a, a solid attempt to keep that disc in play, but wasn't to be today. I believe they're trying to dissipate the call to see where the disc came back in because of the greatest attempt, but they've come back. As you see here, Pucci's looking around for options, working out the back of the end zone. Not the best of options. And you can see the sidelines from Southern Hospitality calling it out, but Pudi calling it in. Then knocking 
with the catch there. And we taking it to the replay. Um, but it looks like replay of the the, the attempt of to hop before, but I think that's been called as a as a as an out. Call I think his his outside foot may have been down when he caught it and therefore decided it's out and that's the turnover. Seth Aroma with the disc on the goal line, ready to punch it in. Southern Hospitality with another opportunity. Waves it off, looks Despato. Seth Aroma. Green. Despato. Seth Aroma. Back to Despato. And a one, two, three between the handlers here for Green for his second score of the game. And after a little bit of a hiccup from Southern Hospitality early. They come back strong to score the point with some chili handler offense there. Yeah, so that's a hold for um, NC Southern Hospitality, which is which is great. They'll be happy with that, although I'm sure that uh, after two clean offensive points, having a few turnovers in that one will be a little bit more disappointing for them. I know that they're going to be wanting to put those, those holds in cleanly. Uh, but again, a great job just to make sure that they uh, got that disc back, um, put putting uh, Putti under a lot of pressure um, and able to, to make sure that they, they secure that hold. As you see here, one of the players for Southern Hospitality to watch, as you see Tristan Green being a threat, scoring twice for Southern Hospitality. Again, an interesting fact I learned yesterday, he's one of the starters for the, one of the strongest programs in the U.S in terms of college ultimate UNC Darkside. So North Carolina, been a formidable force for years. I've played against them. We haven't had much luck here, but again, a strong team and a strong showing from the captain having two goals already. Yeah, and that was great, that that, that handler movement in the in the red zone. They sort of, the stack didn't even move. It looked like they just knew that those handlers were gonna move it around the back and then work it into the corner. And as you see here, Big Cat throws a pull out of bounds. That's what he wanted us to call him, Big Cat. So a big show here for the guy in the yellow shorts. And Puti will be pleased to start it at the brick as we go for their second offensive possession. The disc is in. It's flowing out line. Pick called. I think they're just just out of the stack, just quickly resolving that. Fakes it up. And Pucci still facilitating the deceiving. They can swing it around. And it's chucked down deep. Pucci with two defenders. Big Cat. It's not enough as Pudi get there and the deep shot is a success for them as Pudi go 2-2 to level the score. And again, another great showing there from them. Honestly, looking chilly again. Yeah, very um, comfortable taking those under options, cutting hard to make sure that they're getting resets for, for whoever's on disc, really hustling to make sure they're gaining that under space and getting free in that under space. And then looking, I think each time they get the disc, they're looking into that deep area. We did see yesterday Puti putting a lot of discs deep, um, very, very comfortable goes across the line and very, very comfortable to receive across the line. I think every single person on their side, it seems like has a, a great arm and a great ability to, to make a kind of athletic and speedy cut deep and a, and a great grab in the end zone. So um, definitely a team that are going to be looking for those long shots. They had huge success with it yesterday. Uh, we saw that play again and again from Putin. and teams really unable to kind of contain them both under and deep and oftentimes finding that uh, those deep shots were really coming off for them. So great to see it. Great to see that sort of expansive play and, and, and that was really well executed. Hopefully we'll see more of that later on in the game. As you saw there from number 55, Vitamin going down deep. They have great... As you said, Rachel, deep threats there as well, too. And they love to use them. As we see, the disc goes out of bounds here. And Southern Hospitality probably were taking about the break. One would think. You see Green again with the disc. Here, Despato throws it down deep. 
and that is a deep shot and a half. Three passes, and it's a score for Southern Hospitality. Probably their cleanest looking point so far. And they level, or they get the score up to three to two. Yeah, that definitely looked like a play that, that they've practiced. Their, their setup off of that um, bricked pull was, was quite clean, and they, they, had, they knew exactly where everyone was moving. They created space for each other. Um, and then that deep cut was excellent, created separation, cut really hard into that, into that back corner, um, and just really, really nicely executed. And, and that was a very, very clean offensive move uh, by NC Southern Hospitality. You see Desipato just chucks it down deep with plenty of space, and what a money pass there for them. Southern Hospitality will take that all day. But the question is now, both offenses have looked great so far. It just comes down to defenses to see who can break who first. Yeah, both teams are going to be looking to see if they're able to increase their defensive pressure, increase the you know, the, 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 the force that they're bringing to the, the offensive line, see if they can upset um, these, these smooth offensive plays that we're seeing. Um, that's going to be critical for them to kind of really be forcing to turnovers and forcing Ds. Hootie right here with great field position around the break mark. As they look, throw it about the halfway line. And there's a pick called. But the disc pick called. Raquel Torre with the disc first. Off the cut with a little bit of space. Probably going to look back to give it to her again. Now just quickly resolving the stall count. Often hard to know when, when to bring the disc back in, but they've resolved coming in on two. And again, they hit Hattori again. As she looks right there. Sandberg clearing out the way. Vitamin clearing out the way. Are there any options? Pudi get it back as the resets and start. Waves off Sandberg in the middle. Lino back with the disc, throws it up the line, and a sliding catch there as they get it halfway across the play mark. Nolpin. He's back to Lino. No goes up to Hattori. Hattori scanning the options, throws it to Sandberg. And it's right around. What a whip pass. Lino all over the place here. And he's up Hattori with the third catch of the point. Pudi in great field position to see if they can punch in the score. And they are close again. And they convert again as Vitamin for his second score of the game. Proving to be a clutch end zone factor. But again, Raquel Torre just running all around the field there, getting multiple catches along the line, making Pooty up three to three. Pooty definitely having to, to work harder, I think, on that offensive point. Um, Southern Hospitality putting a bit more pressure on them, kind of catching them a little bit more on this sideline. They were having to do, Booty were having to do some, some dumps almost like directly backwards to then move the disc across the field. Uh, Southern Hospitality putting a lot of defensive pressure on and I think they had a few people sort of just taking that extra beat to, to poach in the zones as they um, stayed a person to person defense but perhaps just kind of trying to do some heads up defense thinking about lingering in the, in the lanes a little bit. Um, forcing Putti to, to really try and figure out where the space was and, and move the disc around the back. Um, but yeah, Putti not, not too flustered by that, able to keep moving it through hands. Lots of passes at that point, but, but comfortably moving that up the field. And then another upline cut for the score there. Nice. Noise, noise, noise. And getting Rachel Douglas with excellent commentary analysis. Just, again, always a pleasure to work with here. And we're also having a great time here in Windmill in Amsterdam. Shouts out to the volunteers and the staff at this great tournament. As we come back in here, Ruckerman jumping up a little bit higher, but green with the disc. And the speed you can see. So the rumor trying to get there, but it does look like it got pushed down maybe by the wind a little bit, I assume. No, I think that was a bit of an execution error. I can see number 34 uh, holding his head. I think he's a little bit disappointed how that came out. Um, just didn't have the right, didn't have the right angle on it, didn't have the right uh, touch on it. Came in quite bladey, quite fast, and uh, just dropped away before before the the, um, the receiver could could make a play. Um, but I think that was that was maybe a nice idea, but just not executed well. With the game's first turn, it looks like the turns are coming back as McKean throws it into the ground for Pootsie. And Southern Hospitality have another opportunity on O. 
trying to get it back to Green, one of their sitter handlers. And there is a pick called. Looks like they're saying that the disc comes back in at zero. Looking for options. Waves off. Sage O'Keefe. Looks like another pick coming in. Comes in at two. Looking for options. They get the option back. It's a swing. They have to be pushed back. Southern Hospitality. And a throw behind. Set the room up. It's a pickup by McKean. Pucci had to go back along and they move it up the line. First time we see a D-line O oh, kind of working on the other opponent's side. And it's a deep chuck downfield. Are they going to get there? No, Seth the Rumor snatches it out the air. Quite a speculative option there. I'm not sure that wasn't, didn't seem to be high enough in the stall count to really warrant as like a bailout throw, but quite an aggressive um, option into quite a lot of traffic. So I'm not sure that was something that kind of Pooty needed to be looking at at that moment. And maybe you could say even a pre-line jitters right there where got excited to have the disc as we see Southern Hospitality cross the halfway point as well too. Watch off, be close, be close. Green looking at Despotato but throws it away. Set the rumor. O'Keefe up the line, but he waves it off. There's no handlers in the set. Of course, Green's going to be there. Set the room back with the disc. Back to Green. Breaking some ankles here. But they're fakes. And it is a score for Southern Hospitality after a little bit of a hiccup there making sure that they right this ship again. A few turns for the first couple of turns, I should say, at this point. Southern Hospitality go up four to three. The turns we saw in that point also seemed to be, I mean, of course, that, that, that turnover that for NC uh, Southern Hospitality in the end zone was, you know, a, a great interception, but, but that it was perhaps maybe not the right throw, um, throwing option. And then before that, we saw two kind of unforced errors. Um, so we are seeing turnovers, but at the moment, it's not necessarily sort of big defensive plays. It, it, it does look to be like a little bit of kind of execution errors or decision-making errors. So um, interesting kind of change in dynamic from that early calm and, and decisive um, offense we were seeing from both sides. And now I think we're starting to see some cracks forming a little bit. Maybe this is, you know, second day tiredness. Maybe this is just still working out the kinks as as a team on, on for sort of both sides. But yeah, definitely seeing some, some, some sort of errors that, that, that um, each team is bringing rather than actually kind of defense, forced defenses. As we see here, maybe hopefully this is the floodgates opening up for turns. Again, we've seen really consistent great play from both teams, but now we're going to see, oh, as the wind picks up here, but it's just snagged out the air and Pudi start around the brick mark here. Sandberg with the disc. It's back middle. Tori makes a cut to the space and gets there. Okay, Tori, Nino with the disc here around half field. It's chucked down deep. No pin with the catch. And they're looking around. And Lino with a snag. After a quick hiccup in the early one of the win for Pucci, they get the disc back under control, I would say, and make it 4-4 there. Yeah, that was a great downfield uh, look um, by Puti, that sort of slightly longer throw in the middle there. Um, really well weighted, put put up high and looping. So there was a um, Southern Hospitality defensive player, a male player in that space who could have potentially had a play on it, but just the disc was weighted in a way and, and kind of the, the trajectory of the disc meant it went up and around them and they weren't able to, to get a hand on it. And then number three for Puti doing a great job to, to bring that point in uh, when the throw was perhaps a touch behind her but but wasn't bothered by that was able to secure the catch for the score um yeah again Pooty Pooty just calmly working it up and, and figuring it out as you said at the beginning of that point you know that that first pass maybe there's a little bit of lack of focus that there isn't much wind but occasionally there might be a little bit of a gust um, and both teams just need to make sure they're adjusting for that and making sure that as they throw they, they've taken into account the conditions but really there there isn't much isn't much wind to account for, so perhaps that just caught them unawares. But but I do think that's that that that's the sort of focus in the moment that, that both teams are uh, need to make sure that they're securing. 
As you see here, Green sells it to Spaeth. Spaeth looks to Osborne. Osborne looking for options here, see if there's anything there. And it is a turn by great defense by Pucci and a great O-line start. And it is a score for the Fame's first break. Pucci go up five to four there. Honestly, great defense by Pucci to cause a turn. Yeah, amazing work. That You could just see in that back corner that um, Southern Hospitality just didn't have any options, unfortunately. He was holding the disc, he's looking around, and you can hear, you feel the stall count rising and the kind of, you know, the, the pressure rising. Um, but Pudi just turning that defense on, really not giving any any available options downfield. Uh, looking at his dump, looking at the reset, looking at options, trying to find something, someone to pass to. Um, unable to find an option, tried to float it up and float it out. Um, to give the, the reset a chance to get there, but Pucci just shut that down and then really quick, turn around, waste no time, pick it up, in for the score. Beautiful. And just, again, great field position there, as Rachel was saying, just picking it up, causing the turns, playing great downfield D and handler Ds as well, too, as we see Southern Hospitality likes to work within their handlers. And maybe that's the crack for the formula there as we get the game's first D in the break. Yeah, Booty doing an excellent job of shutting down that handler movement. They really didn't have any options and uh, very heads up. I think they were aware that that was a high stall count, so new to be aware of it and, and great, great to get that block. Pooty see to look if they can capitalize again on defense and get another break while Southern Hospitality see if they can hold. Green picks up the disc to Sabato. Set the rumor. Cutters are looking for the disc here too as they swing it along the line. Southern has some tally working around, faking a pass. Big cow with a doink, but Dispato gets the disc back. Beautiful teamwork there. It's great. And a rare drop by Dispato. Pudi with another opportunity around half field to see if they can capitalize on a turn. McKee calling Manny. Just repeating what it says again. Go, 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 go. Not the best pronouncer here by any means. Pucci do not matter as they're looking to get within the red zone. McKean swirls around. It is a snag. Marth with this. McKean. Set the rumor all over McKean, but it's a great matchup we see there. McKean to McKean again. Pucci look within the red zone. Trying to see if they can knock on the door to punch something in here. Are there any options? The disc goes floaty and is a size mismatch. Big Cat gets it over and Southern Hospitality saving themselves again. And a miscommunication there. Both teams just looking a little bit over excited, a little bit trigger happy. The, the Pooty pass, trying to get it into the end zone, didn't look like it was it was a kind of the right option, and they ended up having to throw something really loopy to try and get it where they wanted to get it. Um, Pooty calling timeout, uh, which I think is a great shout in this moment. Uh, both teams just needing to take a second, take a, a moment to collect themselves, getting a little bit kind of trigger happy, a little bit pedal to the metal, um, and able just to take a few moments now to take their to get a breath. And we'll also take a break here, too, as we show you an awesome video from our Alti TV crew. Alti.tv. So loads of tournaments happening, which you can attend either as a player or a spectator. You can find them on UltiCal.
And as you see here, we are back. I, we were letting you hear kind of the, I guess, huddles here from Southern Hospitality saying we're going to get the ball. A famous chat <laughs> by the University of Vermont there. Again, they have one of their players, Tim Bliss, also accompanied by his mother here too on the team, Laura Bliss, having a great connection there as well too. And that's what you love to see, the game bringing families together out in Windmill, in Europe. Yeah, great family trip across <laughs> the pond over to the Netherlands. It's great to see so many international teams here at this tournament. It's a world-renowned tournament. It's a world-renowned good time. So people making the effort to come in from all, all corners of the world. It's amazing to see. McKean throws it to McKean, 64 and 46. It's a chuck down field. But Big Cat gets the disc back. And Greed shakes some defenders, looks up. Seth the rumor, you can see it looking in his eyes. And the matchup probably oh. so far of the tournament. Right there, maybe a debate call between McKean and Seth Romer saying McKean might have got some early contact in there. There was definitely contact. You know, I think they're not going to deny that. I think 64 realized uh, that quite early on. But I think the question will be, if there weren't contact, were they going to have a play on that disc? Uh, that came in quite quite far and quite, you know, it, it came all the way to this, this home sideline. Um, I guess the question there will be, do they think that um, if there weren't the contact, um, which definitely, you know, made him lose a step, but, but didn't interrupt his run too much. Was he going to be able to catch that disc? And I think uh, Pooty might be arguing that actually he wasn't going to have a play on that because that was a bit of an aggressive throw there at the end. Very hard to say, though. Very hard to imagine, you know, if I hadn't had, if I'd had an extra second, if I'd had that extra step, would I have been able to make up that ground? I think in that situation as a player, you often back yourself and you're like, yeah, absolutely I could. But uh, maybe from our angle, it looked a little bit a little bit harder. Especially now too, so early within the mid run, as we see both teams coming together to see maybe if they can have a resolution from the sidelines call. It might be just honestly a contested call within the replay. Looks like contact early. And it's a difficult call, I say. From, from this angle, I think that Actually, it would have it would have had to have been a massive play for him to bring that down. I'm not so I don't know whether whether or not that that would have been possible, but uh, it's up to them on the field as to whether they think uh, whether he thinks that he would have had a play on that. And it looks like an uncontested foul there, saying that both players come into an agreement. Yeah, I mean there, there definitely was contact, so uh, I guess that that point can't be argued. Seth the rumor again coming down with the disc, moves it along to Green. Trying to find some play. So the rumor, waving it off. Green with a little shovel pass, fakes a hammer. So the rumor, as you can see, a connection. Southern Hospitality hold after a long grind point there to make it fives again. Yeah, interesting. It's, it's often the case when you're sort of involved in a in a call. Uh, coming out of it, you can often feel a little bit fired up. You know, each of them definitely having to argue their point uh, in the resolution of that of that foul call. And then, of course, it's the same person who then goes and receives the score. So sometimes you can see someone who's maybe a little bit amped up. They're they're feeling some sense of injustice from from uh, the the foul call earlier potentially. Um, and then they're the one cutting hardest and getting the disc for the score in the end. But uh, great that NC Southern Hospitality are able to put that one in and bring us evens at fives. Let's get ready here. Sandberg giving a thumbs up to the team as they send out the O-line for Pooty. Pooty O-line having a bit of a break here as the D-line for Pooty converting a break one and then two having a long hold here. here hands up from Pooty Tim Bliss waiting for the hand wind picking up a little bit here definitely a, a bit of a breeze hitting the fields now kind of moving from this home side maybe the sort of the far right of you, as you see on your screens down towards the the, the away side that far sideline in the left corner 
Shivas, there's the pass, but it's another deep chuck there and another easy throw down line, downwind, I should also say, from Puti, making it easy. One, two, three passes for a score. Yeah, that was a beautiful look. That throw was just weighted to perf perfection. Uh, very, very calm. Like, even the cutter, you know, he got that separation, but it just looks like, you know, almost chill running onto that. Didn't seem flustered at all, even though he had a, a Southern Hospitality uh, defender on his shoulder. But yeah, very, a, a very, very calm play and just seeing where the space was and, and trusting themselves to execute that perfectly. And what a beautiful pass here. Perfectly in line. Easy enough. Again, as as a receiver there, running down deep, that's what exactly what you want. No hassle, you already got a few steps on your person. Catching it with ease in the end zone, it's beautiful. Yeah. Chef's kiss. Beautiful. That's a 10 out of 10 from us in the commentary booth. We like that play. Stamp it. Stamp it, seal of approval. We like it. Good. Also great as you sort of talk about the wind picking up and then they just sort of execute this flawless, flawless huck. You know, it's it's the standard of the team. You know, the, the wind the wind might be getting a little bit more gusty. You might be moving around a bit, but um, these are the kind of caliber of players that they'll just need to make that mental adjustment and then they're still able to put up just about any throw they want to put up. And is centered to green here. Bliss with the disc. Bliss throws it in the middle. Southern Hospitality is trying to see if they can get it to the middle. To continue it back, a flow. Bliss again. Oh. And it's a pick called. Number 46, Beauty getting getting a fingertip to that to that pass to number 34. Uh, but unfortunately not able to get the block, but definitely saw a change in uh, trajectory. Espato brings it back to Seth Rumor. Run, Spato, but it's just out of her reach here. A little bit of confusion on the disc being picked up here. I think number 22 was expecting there to be a foul call on that throw. Uh, number 15, though, not not choosing to make that call, despite there being quite a lot of contact on the mark. Uh, number 22 just assuming that that call would come, uh, but but 15 not electing to make it. Jarvi picks up, makes a hold, but it looks like it's a pick called early in. Ross Osborne on the mark here. Actually, no, I lied, that's not Ross. Again, it's, it's interesting without the jersey numbers. You gotta pick out players' names just by faces and recognitions we've seen before. Pootie doing a better job with having their names on the back. This is the middle. Martez looking around. Martez. It's getting high, but they find an option here. And Tim Bliss with a big D there to keep Southern Hospitality from getting broken again. But they have a long way to go. Green, Despato. Set the remark. It's going to go deep. Nope, it's going to go for the undershot. Looking a little bit more calmer there. But as soon as I say that, it's a throwaway again. And Puti right outside the red zone with great opportunity to go. Both teams just looking a little bit flustered. You know, I think the, 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 there's a lot of defensive pressure. They're having to work a bit harder to get free. Um, and they just need to make sure that their decision making is, is staying calm, even if they're having to run as hard as they are. Jarvi again with the disc here. back at Jarvis, but it looks like a cut up the... And it is a throw away, just not options. Martis with the intended target. Green back again. So the rumor screaming for the disc. Yes, I give it to me. But it's just right in between two of the players there. Miscommunication, maybe an execution error. This point is has been there's been a number of turnovers i think we've seen one actual d and then the rest has been just uh execution errors decision making errors and Puti calling a timeout uh once again i think both teams just just needing to focus up uh, the last timeout was called um for the same reason and let's see if this one maybe can be a little bit more effective
We, we are, are a group, group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. We are back again a great video from our alt tv crew here and we just want to say we are happy to be here in amsterdam covering not one but two games at the same time on two different pitches and we would do that with the ability of donations from our patreon again with a little donation a month as four euros we are allowed to bring great content if you want to donate more you are more than welcome to donate more but we ask just for a little bit maybe four four euros a month so that way we can keep bringing great production here we have a great crew a great staff and we love showing ultimate without a paywall here and with your help and support we can continue to do that trying to bring as much ultimate to you as possible trying to make it accessible so that everyone can see and have access to all these amazing plays so if you're watching the content if you're enjoying it make sure that you like you subscribe you comment you let us know uh, but also as Corey says you know as much as a, a cup of coffee, one cup of coffee per month, then you could be sponsoring and supporting the future future events and, and making sure that there's an ulti TV coverage of all of your favorite tournaments and all of your favorite teams. And Jarvi here picks up the disc as we start back after the timeout here. Looking around. Martus being an option here, but yeah. Seth Aruba snags the disc out of the air, poaches off an intelligent poach right there. Southern Hospitality working on the opposite side of the field to see if they can punch it in. Yeah, great heads up defense there. Really read where the disc was going. Saw that there were two really great uh, Puti undercuts coming. They'd lost their defenders, but uh, number 15 just recognizing what was, what was happening and able to sit in the lane and get a great layout block. Layout block or just a block? I can't remember, but a great block. We'll say that. See here, the disc goes back to Bliss. Run, goes to swings it to green, back to Bliss. Set the rumor. Southern Hospitality looking for shots inside, trying to see. Oof. And the wind might have helped float it there a little bit. Either what? Way. I thought that was um, what looked like a really calm and easy score, maybe going to get away from him. But uh, no, making sure that he uh, stayed with that the whole way down and uh, came down with it in the end. As we see some daps up at the end of the end zone from both teams there after a great point. That is sixes as Southern Hospitality even the score here. And we see the Pudi O-line come back out. A messy point, a messy point for both sides. I think hopefully that timeout call uh, definitely was able to focus up uh, Southern Hospitality. I think they, they were able to get that that block. We weren't able really to see if, if Pudi were gonna, didn't see enough of their offense there to, to know if they'd able to focus up after that timeout call. Um, but definitely a, a kind of a messy point with a lot of turnovers that really were sort of had to be owned by each side. You know, it wasn't necessarily that they were getting blocks forced on them. Um, it was really more, as we saw in that replay a few moments ago, that was an execution error. There, there's a lot of pressure from the defense, but if you're looking for, to kind of put a, a dump throw out, we just need to make sure that that's, it's going where your dump cut is going. So uh, definitely something that each team can kind of own and therefore they can adjust and, and um, improve. Uh, but but yeah, hopefully that timeout will be what they needed, um, and they'll be able to come out with a little bit a little bit more clinical, a little bit calmer, a little bit cleaner at this point. As we see here, we can expect some different showings. A very solid O line, I'd say, for Puti, as they haven't even turned the disc here with their O line, and they have a gift here starting around midfield. The disc is picked up, Ricola. Prolo gives it to Atori. Atori looks at Sandberg. Sandberg gets the disc, chucks it down deep to Lino. We know she can make the play, and she does. And again, another calm point for Pucci there, getting the score up to seven to six. Yeah, proving that they definitely still have still have that calm and, and decisive offense. Um, not gonna not gonna mess around and kind of put themselves in a situation where they're making um, errors like they did in, in the previous point. At that point, I think coming out, showing that they're, they're still able to play that, that really calm offense that we saw earlier in the game. Uh, really lovely show from Puti there and just 
finding their players, making sure they, they kind of had the space and, and setting up their cuts really well. As we see here, Sandberg connected mm. to Lino. Lino being one of the main focal points for this O-line of Puti. It's hard to even pick out one person as they just look like a very cohesive unit, throwing the facilitating passes and cuts all around for scores. It's a thing of beauty to watch. And Southern Hospitality are still looking to see if they can even get a turn on them. On that O-line, I should say. Here's you wait, hand up from Southern Hospitality, hand up from Pucci, and Martis throws the disc down field. And it is caught here by Will Clark. Throws it to Green, to Sabato. Looking around, back to Green. You know you're gonna chuck it down deep, and they do set the river, running down, trying to find it in the light. High points it and gets the it was this guy right there for a little bit of a, a kick pass on McKean, but great matchup there as we see in Southern Hospitality tied up seven to seven. Great answer from NC uh, Southern Hospitality. Uh, um, Puti, Puti putting in like a nice clean point it, just a few passes just a moment ago and, Puti, uh, and uh, NC Southern Hospitality came out and said, hey, we can do that too. Uh, very, very similar, you know, very similar vibes between those last few points. Very calm, you know, they had those cuts coming nice and early, lots of great separation deep. Um, but uh, yeah, lovely, G great point, and uh, a great sky in the end zone there under pressure to, to bring down that point. And even so, what we heard in the back from our production crew is now we have a galaxy point. It is sevens here. Again, we nothing better than a galaxy point, maybe a universe point, but it's a little harder with the Swiss draw to have it. But galaxy point, let's hear it. Sevens, who is going to take half here? Will Pucci's offense continue their streak? of no turn to continue to punch it in or will Southern Hospitality have an answer to maybe cause a turn to get a break here? Only this point can determine that. Only the two teams and maybe the win can determine that. <laughs> it's here Tristan Green on the uh, sideline saying so excited. We are so exciting here with Galaxy Point. Big Cat with the hand up, throws the disc down deep. Great pull, sitting up, giving them lots of time to get down there on defense. Ricola looking around for options here, finds an option. And Nicola have to really laying out there to get that disc, still gets it anyway. NC Southern Hospitality with a poach in the lane, trying to put pressure on the, the handlers again. As they switch it in. Person to person now. Nicola still going out the back. Sandberg looking for an option here, not getting it. Ricola still looking. Southern Hospitality playing tighter defense here, throwing a little bit more schemes out. No pin. Lino. Atonin throws it down deep, running down. Is it going to stick up enough? It looks like it sticks, and it's a perfect close to the first chapter of this game as Pudi take it 8-7 on Galaxy Point. One break between the two teams here and just having a ball within a game. It's a tight one. It's a contested one, but that's what we expected coming out here in the showing. Yeah, amazing play. That was such a great, uh, really Big pressure from the from the Southern Hospitality uh, defense there. Huge pressure on the handlers. That poach in the lane was really shutting things down downfield. Um, but Pudi just not bothered. You know they were really happy moving it around the back. They found those uh, shots through the middle, and then of course once again that kind of special uh, move that they like to pull. Move it around, move it around, move it around. Nice and calm, nice and calm. Okay, someone's free deep. Let's go. I think that's a beautiful analysis here too, as we saw. A great first half, very exciting. Only one break separates both of the teams here as Pudi got that early on, maybe midway through the first half. But still really contested game, really close, really exciting. Deep shots, some diving catches, some diving Ds there. Very, very intriguing, I should say. 
Yeah, absolutely. Both teams really in this, you know. And, and as we said, that's one of the benefits of this Southern, uh, Southern <laughs> Swiss draw. Southern hospitality is in my brain. This Swiss draw system means that these games are going to be tight, you know. And we've had on the streams uh, consistently, we've had uh, these amazing games uh, of, of great matchups, really evenly matched teams. Um, and it just, that's the way the system is designed, you know. The, 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 the way that the tournament is, is structured means that it's just going to be game after game of, of amazing ultimate. Um, so we're here at halftime, 8-7 to Puti, um, of a really uh, intense and wonderful game. Beautifully put. And while they take a break, we're going to take a break too with a quick promo video. Makes so much sense it rhymes. So stick with us here. signed up to the Pulse TV Patreon yet? Uh, no, not yet. Why? We well, best get on it before London Invite. We've got 16 of the best men's and women's teams from around Europe, and it's the last stop for four worlds. And it's only 350 a month. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Well, I'll, I'll get on it late. It's uh, on the right tab for you there as well. back here at Windmill, a great video from our Alti TV production crew here, advertising London Invite next week as we will be there streaming as well. And honestly, Rachel, that's going to be in your home country. It's going to be exciting. What can we expect? Do you know anything? Yeah, um, it's going to be an incredible, uh, incredible display. I think we're, we're spoiled for how much Ultimate we're getting to, to watch at the moment. So it's 16 of Europe's best, uh, best teams. Uh, we've got a, an open and a women's division, um, and it's going to be it's going to be great. It's uh, in London, which is a sort of it's been a while since London's kind of hosted an international tournament like that. Um, and yeah, it's 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 organised by Clapham, uh, obviously well known as one of the premier open teams in Europe. Um, and yeah, they're 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 bringing everyone together. I think it's it's designed as a way of sort of getting the teams together, getting another uh, really competitive weekend of Ultimate in before Worlds. Uh, but uh, Ulti TV are going to be, be there. It's going to be some, some familiar showdowns, some, some familiar matchups of teams that have played against each other a number of times. Um, and it's going to be great to, ha to be able to watch them again as their season builds and as they're kind of on that road to Worlds, building those connections. And it should be a wonderful weekend of Ultimate. So if you are watching, if you love watching Ultimate, make sure you're tuning in. You can also go in person if you're in the UK or in London or you just really want to make the trip. Um, you can buy tickets. Uh, there's a, a, a link on, on the um, Ulti TV page or on the Clapham page, or there is a, an Instagram page for London Invite. Um, but yeah, otherwise, make sure you're tuning in and, and make sure you're supporting us on Patreon so that we can bring you more Ultimate coverage. And with that being said, we're going to focus right back at this game here. Sandberg with the disc. And Vivian with a rare drop here. And it's the first turn for Pudi's O-line. A Southern Hospitality start the second half with a gift. Despato scanning around here. And just out of the reach of Mitsuka. Gives it right back. Sometimes with higher competition like that, you don't get many turns as we've seen here. Maybe that's the only one you sh they've gotten so far in this game for the O-line. They toss it away. And a laying out catch to get it half field. Lino right outside of the red zone here for Putsi. Hattori fakes it. Lino. Vitamin. And they're knocking on the doorstep here to convert. Get a twofer. Hattori waits to punch it in. And it's a hammer across. And not in. And it's a score, it looks like. Anyway, maybe a debate of the end call. 
but it was in anyway. And a huge hammer across the field for Akels Hattori. Yeah. It's hammer time. <laughs> it's hammer time. Nice vision there just to see where the space is on the field. I think it's very easy when you get to that kind of um, end zone to, to be looking in front of the disc and to be really focusing on that area. And you often see a lot of cutters attacking into that same space. Uh, so great vision there just to see that actually there was a, an open cart moving onto that break side, that far side, um, able to get the disc out there, open that field up, um, and then secure it. If it wasn't a score on that, on that um, hammer, then it definitely was a score on that, on that next pass. Uh, yeah, really nice play, uh, nice and calm. Definitely quite like a, a, um, a frantic point before that. You know, we saw two turns off the, on, the, on the trot, uh, both sort of just execution errors. Um, and then having to kind of go to ground, lay out to secure just like a, an upline pass. Um, so definitely feeling a lot of pressure, but uh, Putti not being too flustered by it and able to kind of then set up their end zone offense, move the disc around the back, open up that space and get the score. And we see here a two for, for Putti coming out on Galaxy Point, making it 8-7, and then also coming out of half with it, just making it 9-7-2. So we see Southern Hospitality has some work to do. As then Pucci pulls the disc down deep. And a miscommunication there from Southern Hospitality to start. This bottle gets the disc and goes to degree at the center. Throws it to Jobadiah Spaith. Continues the flow. Getting up to Big Cat. Matsuka was making a cut downfield. But it is incomplete. And Pucci have another turn here as they pick up the disc. And great field position. Jarvie looking for the disc here. Getting the disc there. And there's a pick called. This could be a very critical um, offense for Putti. They're, they're currently two up. It's the first time this game there's been a point difference of two. If Putti are able to put that in and extend their lead to three, that's going to be a really big job for Southern Hospitality to come back from. So this could be a kind of a, quite a pivotal moment. And Jarvie here really facilitating the flow with his disc. So we see a great swings here by Putti, knocking in the red zone. Back to Jarvie again. And a pick called. And Jarvie gets the disc back, throws it up line. McKean throws it back across the field, and it works with no mark on sight. And they are broken as Pucci get a break there to make it 10 to seven. Yeah, a three, a three point lead in a game as tight as this um, is, is a really difficult thing to come back from. These teams have shown that they're, they're both incredibly competitive and, and they've sort of been trading, trading points up until now. Um, as you said, they, they uh, Pucci able to, to take half and then come out on offense, really, really critical for them. Um, and now just extending that, converting that defense into a point, um, it's, gonna, it's made the, the task for NC Southern Hospitality now that much harder. They've got that much further to work. Um, is it possible? Absolutely. You know, they just have to switch it on and figure out how to, how to make those adjustments. At the moment, we're still seeing some of those kind of miscommunications and, and um, execution errors. If NC Hospita Southern Hospitality are able to tighten that up, um, and really just kind of turn it up a notch, hit, hit it into the next gear. Um, of course, this game, this game is still, they're still in this game. It's still possible for them to, to make this comeback, but they're really going to have to pull something out of the bag because Putti are definitely on a roll. They're looking really smooth. Um, I think they're tightening up those, they're, they're reducing those uh, errors that they were making earlier in the game. So yeah, it's, it's an uphill battle for NC Southern Hospitality now. And as we say here as well too, they still have it in their arsenal to continue on, but it's also a point difference as well as they want to get as close as possible for the rankings to continue to make it to the bracket. And it's a foot block here, but it's a foul called. Set the room throws his body on the ground trying to catch that, but it is a foul on the throw. Jason, 
see continuing cuts here. Not many options as Pudi are playing great defense as they have been all game. So trying to find something here. Oh, some contact downfield. We have a, a player who I think might have just caught an elbow or something like that in the head. Just seems to have uh, had a little bit of contact there and, and perhaps caught them a bit unaware. It looks somewhat of a collision to the head, neck area. Injury called, so I think uh, this player is just going to come off, just take take a moment to, to recover from what looked like a little bit of, a little bit of contact, um, and uh, number 34 will come on in their place. And again, with those type of injuries, you want to make sure the players are always well with any type of injury here. But that was a neck head injury, so hopefully everything is all right as they take a seat, and we see Tristan Green come into the game almost an immediate impact and it is out of bounds yeah. as Pudi have an opportunity now again for another break great attempt to keep that disc in but unfortunately it did look like his outside foot was down when he made the catch so uh, that disc was out and it comes in uh, as a Pudi disc and here McKean picks it up for Pudi and a miscommunication there as he throws it away Southern Hospitality gifted another opportunity here on offense. Green with the disc. There's a high up line. Did we call it? And it's thrown to Clark. Set the rumor, throws it up to O'Keefe. O'Keefe looks, throws it back to Green. Green throws it across the field, set the Roma, maybe a one-two punch, and it's outside the left hand as it swings out of the back. Very, very aggressive option there. Um, like, I think the space was there, but it, but it came in it came in hot and it came in high, and that was uh, just a very, very difficult catch to make that unfortunately they weren't able to come down with. Uh, but yeah, a... Uh, an aggressive option that uh, maybe at this point in the game it's, it's they need to be taking those. They need to try and get a few scores on the bounce uh, to, to keep this game. But as you said before, you know, they, the, the points difference does matter. So uh, if they are able to, even if they, they don't secure the win in this game, trying to make sure that they keep the points difference as low as possible uh, is really critical for this Swiss draw format. The disc is being up right here. Martis with the disc slinging it around here. And wow, back to McKean. And as we got to mention too, there was another hammer in there as well. And Pudi convert the break, make it 11 to seven. I think uh, some of the Pudi players, I'm not sure. It looked like someone in the end zone there thought that that, that, was, that was a throwaway, thought that that wasn't getting it caught. And then out of nowhere, this Pudi player just runs onto that nicely for the score. Uh, so maybe a little moment of disappointment and then elation on the field there uh, as they realized what they thought was a, perhaps a misthrow was actually exactly exactly as it was meant to be. Uh, yeah, so um, Pooty with another score, widening the gap, taking it to 11-7. Uh, NC Southern Hospitality, again, it's going to be a big challenge for them, but they are... Uh, if they're able to, to even get a few more points on the board, if they're able to kind of stop Pooty from converting some of these points, uh, that will be really helpful for them in the rest of this tournament because it will keep their points difference low. It will keep them um, in, a, in a good position against a really competitive team. Um, the way that Swiss Draw works means that they need to make sure that they're um, demonstrating how, how tight this game was and they want to keep the scoreline as tight as possible. Um, every point matters in the Swiss Draw format. So. NC Southern Hospitality uh, really needing to make sure they get another point on the board and, and they keep the points difference as, as low as possible.
Big Cat with a catch coming here. Throws it down deep. Is it going to complete? No! What a catch by Nonponen there to run from behind and get the D. And now Pucci with another opportunity again to continue to break here and add to the lead. Yeah, that, that looked like a nice option. That looked like it was coming off well, but unfortunately the offensive receiver just had to slow down that, that beat, just had to kind of, uh, wasn't able to run fully in stride onto that disc, had to slow down to try and receive that disc. And of course, the defender was just able to come on through, um, steam through, make up those, those yards and, and get the defense there. Great defensive pressure, great heads up awareness um, and running that down. But yeah, very unfortunate for Southern Hospitality. As we see now, Pucci with, again, another opportunity here. And they're flying here. Lino, a strong line. Bartricus throws it down deep. Del Hemo, it is high point, it is caught. And it's McKean, chilly as you like it. Break in train, break is rolling. That is 12-7 Pucci. And now they're just kind of rolling along here. Southern Hospitality, uh, defensive player there, working really hard to get down there, recovered those yards, was right there when the disc was caught, but it is so hard when you're running full sprint to be exactly aware of the disc and to, to be able to go up and, and, and get pressure on that disc coming in in time. Uh, great job to close down that distance, but yeah, unable to unable to, to get a hand to the disc before the, the offensive player managed to secure it and then nice and calm pop into the end zone. Uh, for that score. Widening the gap, 12-7, uh, NC Southern Hospitality. Are they, are they gonna be able to get another point on the board? There's five minutes left of this game. Uh, so there's enough time for them to, to put at least one in. They could maybe try and, and reduce the gap slightly, but uh, yeah, Pooty definitely coming out dominant in the second half and really, really um, tightening up. We've seen only a few errors from them in the second half. Um, they're working hard and, and their connections are clearly uh, firing. As we see here, now it might be a test of time to see if Pooty make it to 15 or if the horn goes off. Southern Roma snagging that one out of the air. That was pretty sweet. McKean almost reaching in his grasp. Bukat getting it around midfield. Throws it up to Green. And now you can see Southern Hospitality trying to make something happen, trying to get his point as fast as possible. It's a Sapato here, but if there's a pick called in the back. Sabato throws it around. Who caught? They continue to go up to green. And it comes out of green's hands. But Sabato still gets it. Southern hospitality within the red zone here. No pun intended because of the red jerseys. As it continues to throw around. Oh. Right behind Southern Rumors' hands. And it flows out. Really unfortunate uh, error there. Just not able to make the make the catch. It, it did seem to be pretty catchable, but sometimes you just kind of take your eye off the disc for that moment. Um, NC Southern Hospitality so close to the end zone, and now big task. Get trying to get the defense on Puti. Um, really going to have to work hard, work hard here if they want to get the turn. Jarvi with the disc there. As you saw a cross field hammer, kind of maybe a high stall count throw but still completed Jarvie with no mask or mark here Southern Hospitality kind of scrambling maybe throwing some junk at them and there's a catch here and it's a toss by Pritchard right over the heads it's Pucci worker long they're moving it and they score McKean another break here to make it 7 to 13 in the 69th minute of the game 
coming to the conclusion it looks like Pudi's just about wrapping this one up. Yeah, they've 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 tightened up and they've really got into their flow. And I think NC Southern Hospitality, they're they're, they're playing hard, but I think maybe there's just a, a slight like maybe it's a little bit of tightness, slight lack of focus. I think there's a couple of times that we've seen uh, these these little errors or or just maybe like not having their eye quite on the disc. There was the defensive player there um, able to get so so close to a D, but just not not able to get their hand to it. And I think that maybe is just sort of a little bit of tiredness, a little bit of lack of focus. Um, it is really hard on the second day of a tournament to come in, like first game, to come in with, with as much sort of intensity as you need. Um, and perhaps Putin have just been able to kind of get fired up a little bit more this morning. Uh, but NC Southern Hospitality doing a great job and working hard, um, giving us a great game where the scoreline has kind of gone more to Putin's side. They've managed to run away with it in these last few points. But yeah, Southern Hospitality definitely still working hard, definitely still giving it everything they've got. As you see here, the music kind of building up in the background. It is almost time for this game to end. It looks like this will be the last point of the game. And Southern Hospitality come out on offense to see if they can end it 13 to eight or Raputi end it 14 to seven. Hands are raised. Martis throws it down deep. Throws it really deep. Big Cat has to send it to Spaith. We see Spade chucking it down deep as we know he can. I've caught a few of those before. Tim Bliss high pointing the air, snagging it right on the goal line. And it is a score for Southern Hospitality to get it to eight. And there's smiles on their faces as two big deep hucks moving it along that line. Connection there from Spade to Bliss and that will end the game. That catch was ludicrous. I thought there was no way he was getting that. That was unreal. Uh, amazing effort by NC Southern Hospitality to uh, to close out that game on a, on a score, uh, reducing that that points difference just a touch. But yeah, great great effort from both sides. Really showing at the end there that NC Southern Hospitality they've got all the plays. Uh, excellent side, excellent game. Really enjoyed watching that. It was a beautiful game indeed. A great way to start it. But don't go anywhere as we have more games coming up. This is just game one out of six that we are showing on two different pitches here. Again, these teams we will most likely see within the tournament. We hope we see them, a great showing from both of them. But again, we are wrapping up this production here in Amsterdam with this final score, Puti 13, South Southern Hospitality 8. We are your co-commentators, Corey Sosher and Rachel Douglas, but don't go anywhere as we are going to show another round of games. Stay tuned. TV.